Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, new VP of sales treated my coworkers like SH, got the corporate compliance treatment right back, frustrated himself right out of a job. The second story, aunt steals my entire family's livelihood, ends up lost her business. The third story, took on a picked on girl at work, said I wasn't her real supervisor. And the first story is, how the VP of sale came and went. Derek, newly hired VP of sales, was to take over the vacant position that our previous VP got headhunted out of. The new guy came with outstanding marks. He was head of sales for our competitor 10 years earlier, started his own smaller rival company, and had just sold it for a substantial sum. The guy was the goose that laid the golden egg in the eyes of management. As bad luck would have it, he got assigned a desk right next to mine while his cushy corner office was being built to his specifications. Derek, further known as Entitled P, aka EP, and I have little in common, in terms of what we both do for the company. During our first introduction, and upon hearing a short summary of what I do, he somehow got in his head that I'm on the low end of the totem pole, not the lead company report writer and developer of our invoicing and client notification software. I didn't feel the need to correct him when he made the snide remark as he was leaving, hey, gotta start at the bottom to work your way up, right? I didn't like him from that very moment and vowed to make his life a living hell while he was here. He's not my boss, nor do I report to him. EP's first request was to ask for a sales report for all products ordered for the previous year to present day. I knew he meant completed, but hey, he said ordered in his request. No problem. I provided him with a detailed report of every order our numerous clients have placed within the past year. EP leans over to my desk telling me, the report you gave me is wrong. The numbers didn't add up to our posted stats on the internal company website. I confirmed that the request was for orders placed and the information is 100% accurate in presenting correctly. You asked for a report on orders placed within a month. Many of those orders get completed in different months. Did you want a report on orders completed? EP just looked at me like he was going to throw down right then and there. This was our new VP of sales all. It only went downhill from there. EP was convinced that I was an idiot and had it out for me from that moment on. Every report that got sent to him, he would scrutinize my formulas and numbers with a fine tooth comb. Drader, these numbers are wrong. The total average per day isn't accurate. Do this report right. Your request was for client averages. The client profile is for business days, not calendar days worked. There were 21 business days last month. Did you want a company report for total averages? Because you asked for client averages. EP was seething as every report he requested took three times as long to get and requiring multiple revisions because of his wording. I found ways to twist his words at any opportunity. Can you give me the raw data on all orders completed in February for client XYZ? Sure, what year would you like that pulled? 2017? Okay, what fields would you like to see? The standard ones. Which standard? Can you give me a recurrent report that mimics what you're asking for? Just give me the standard data, whatever report I receive in my email each day. I need to call this client now before the rep leaves for the day. Not a problem. Which of the 17 reports you receive each day did you want me to mimic the fields for? Mind you, he's seated four feet from me on my right. He can't talk to me about this as he must reply to all requests via email so that there's a record of the transaction request. After nearly two hours of back and forth, I would then say, oh, that report. Yeah, you can just go to the report server and pull this data yourself. Here, screenshot these instructions on how to pull it yourself. This would have taken him two to three minutes tops even for a first time user. It's Ikea style simple instructions, so literally anyone can do it. He never replied, but I could hear him muttering profanities under his breath. Nobody in the company liked him. His label of entitled P was living up to his namesake as company gossip about him was spreading like wildfire. To top the list of things this idiot was doing around the office, it shows a whole new level of incompetence. What's the company policy on removing the K-cups after making a cup of coffee? mf -er, throw it away. If you see the previous cup in there, throw that away. It's not rocket science. Do I have to dial 9 to get an outside line? For the 20th time, no, just dial. Why does the color printer only print black and white? Because for the 10th time, that's a black and white printer. You have to switch printers to print color. No, we can't make the color printer default for you. 
No, you can't print your emails in color. No, it will not help you do your job better. I need a better chair. Can you order me the $4,400 executive chair from Super Expensive Furniture Corps? Um, no, you'll get the standard $700 executive chair that even our CEO uses that we've ordered for all of our executives. They will arrive in your office at the end of next month when it's finished. But I need this chair for my back. MF, you have a framed photo on your desk of you driving a car in a demolition derby taken last year. He bragged about it during his welcome speech he gave to the monthly company meeting. EP eventually got let go a mere five weeks after being hired. The official reason was that he was not a right fit for the company. The unofficial reason was that he told off the CEO in a meeting about how incompetent his staff was. Surprised you were able to keep your company afloat was the words he was quoted saying to the owner. I felt a sense of pride and accomplishment for contributing to his downfall. The second story is, Great Aunt Gets an Itch She Can't Quite Scratch. So, this happened about seven to eight years ago. My grandfather ran this electrical supply store that his father started and his still living mother owned. My great grandmother also owned quite a bit of real estate and land around the town and was a slumlord landlord. She was the epitome of evil to quite a lot of people and everyone hated her, including most of my family. Just an all around spiteful human being, but you know, family. She was in her 90s and still had plenty of life in her. She took absolutely no meds, not even aspirin. This woman even survived a hit on her that resulted in two 22 LR rounds being forever stuck in her brain. That was a traumatic experience, but a story for another time. Well, my grandfather managed the store, my uncle did their supply jobs, and my mother handled all the rentals. I helped around pretty much everywhere and grew up in that business. Well, one day out of the blue, my estranged great aunt, grandfather's sister, shows up to visit my great grandmother. No big deal, she's been known to do this about every four to five years. Well, over the course of the following months, we had noticed a change in demeanor towards us. She started spending all her time with her daughter, who we'll call Gail. We didn't know it at the time, but Gail was having her rewrite her entire will. Over the following months, Gail had enlisted the help of some of our local PD, using her mom's checkbook. Taps were placed on all our phones. My grandfather and uncle were both arrested under mysterious circumstances. Had power of attorney my mom held revoked and put in her name, and then had my great-grandmother declared incompetent. It was a complete SH storm that hit us all in a row. Then she up and fires everyone in the family because it's now all hers. Luckily at this time, we were able to destroy almost every physical copy of data we had, but not the computers. She changed all the locks and even had her corrupt cop buddies help play guard dog for her. To say we were furious would be an understatement. My family had poured their heart and souls into that business for decades, and it was all ripped out from under us in an instant. My family likes to take the high road, but me, not always. I pondered and waited for the right moment. It was about two months later when a very rough storm was rolling through one summer night. I grabbed my bag of supplies and hopped into my truck. It was about 1 a.m. and the town was dead. No one wanted to get out into that torrential downpour. I pulled up behind the building and killed the vehicle. Now, I was pretty much raised in this building and I knew it inside and out. I also had helped install the security cameras, so I had that knowledge as well. I picked the machine shop door and snuck in. From this point on, I began to lace every possible surface with poison ivy. Keyboards, mice, phones, counters, doorknobs, toilet seat, toilet paper, just anything I knew she would touch. Interesting little fact about my family. Almost everyone in my family is highly allergic to the SH, so much so that they have to go to the hospital for just getting near it. I lucked out on the genetic lottery and it doesn't affect me at all. After every surface had a nice oily film to it, I proceeded to open up the business computers and wipe every financial record and every backup. I also decided to sabotage the computer's electrical supply, so it looked like a power surge blew it. To my glee, I heard the next day that she was in the hospital and a lightning strike had fried their computers. She spent the entire week in the hospital and had to keep going back for months because they just couldn't get rid of the poison ivy. All invoices and accounts both for the electrical supply business and the hundreds of rentals were lost. Literally, all the information had just disappeared. She was never able to truly salvage either business. She was a raging sociopath and definitely not cut out for business. I've heard over the years that she was able to salvage the rental somewhere. With a few hiccups. One tenant threw a brick at her car for threatening her. Several people have shot up the business, bricks thrown through her windows, etc. We won the court and my family took our business back. The last story is, You're not my real supervisor and you never will be. This is a story about Basic. Basic came into work in the accounting department at a law firm after her mother died. My boss was a family friend of hers and wanted to help Basic out. 
She was very young, and right away, a lot of people in the department who didn't like how she got the job took to making fun of her and making sure she never advanced. I was still starting out in this firm and department, but no stranger to law firm life, and wanted to help her out as much as I could. I taught her some basic software skills and tricks. She was very eager to learn, though not very bright. Years pass and she's not gotten a raise of any sort since joining on, and the department seems to delight in this. I jump on an offer to join another department as a supervisor, and I get to choose who gets to come with me. I choose BASIC. The department is to be designed around a workflow I had created, and she had been trained exclusively on it. Upon our first day of setting up in our new office, it is explained that administratively, I'm not her direct supervisor. Time off, sick days, payroll, etc. I am, however, supervisory to the workflow of the department, which includes her participation in it. She takes this to mean that I'm not her supervisor, period, and she gleefully tells me this as someone comes by to congratulate us. I bring up that yes, that is true for the administrative side, and it falls on deaf ears. I confirm with our boss of the situation as I understood it. She agrees. I don't make a big deal of it because we have time to work on it, if it ever comes to that. We press on. Almost a year working together and it's okay. Not great, but the work is getting done. I continue to defend BASIC to the old department, who's still eager for her to fail. One day, BASIC has exciting news. She's landed a new job at a different firm. I'm sad that she didn't come to me for a reference, but I'm very excited for her. BASIC says for me not to tell anyone, as she wants to share the news herself. There's one problem. She just told her supervisor that she's leaving. I know that our boss will dismiss her immediately, though she dismisses people with two weeks pay. We have a backlog of work I can't do alone, and BASIC deserves her victory lap. I can either ignore protocol and let a lot of speculation happen about her sudden departure, or do the job I was hired to do and make sure that BASIC has that victory lap. I leave our office a few minutes later to tell my boss what's going on. Unfortunately, another supervisor and my boss's assistant is there. I ask them if I can have a few minutes alone, and after confirming it isn't personal, they say they'll keep it confidential, and I close the door and explain the situation. My boss, of course, wants her gone immediately. Get her to agree to let her stay a week, with one week's pay, and again ask the two others who wouldn't leave to keep this confidential. By the time I get back to my office, someone has texted BASIC, congratulating her on her new job. The texter had just received a text from someone who was in that room. This is less than a minute after I leave. BASIC slams our office door. She begins to scream at me. This was her news to tell. I try to tell her that I was doing my job, and once again said, you're not a real supervisor. BASIC continues to yell at me until she decides she needs some air. BASIC points a fan on me, puts it on full blast, to shame me, and screams, this is not over, and leaves slamming the door again. I move the fan, go to my computer HR has sent me an email, copying my boss to go over what I had said. I updated them with what was going on, and they asked me if I still want BASIC there for another week. It's my call as supervisor. BASIC comes back, slams the door again, sees that I turned off the fan, and puts it back on me and begins to leave a voicemail to HR to see if she can sit somewhere else for the remainder of her time there. I email back that I would like her to be terminated today. BASIC is then called to my boss's office. When she returns, she's very apologetic. I learn later that my boss has said that she hasn't decided whether or not to let her go today, based on her actions, and it will be based on my recommendation as her supervisor. I say that I'm going to lunch. By the time I get back, she's gone. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more stories like this.